All right, welcome back. Many thanks for staying with us. Let's get straight into the stories now. And we're starting off, of course, um, with the SWAL Minister for Water Resources and Sanitation, Cecilia Dapaz, alleged uh, stolen money. A story is captured in a number of the dailies this morning, and so we want to take a quick dive into it. It's as though there's a new twist to the story every single morning. Daily Guide says Cecilia Dapa bears teeth at fake news. The Chronicle also captures it and says Cecilia Dapa goes bananas, threatens to sue media house. And then when you go into the Finder newspaper, it says Cecilia Dapa demands uh, retraction about alleged monies in her bank account. I'll take you to citynewsroom.com. So Cecilia Dapa takes on Joy News with a reportage on alleged millions in frozen accounts. Story says the legal team of the former Minister of Sanitation and Water Resources, Cecilia Abna Dapa, has written to the multimedia group demanding an unqualified apology for making false statements alleging $5 million and 48 million Ghana cities were found in her Prudential Bank accounts. Clearly, uh, the minister is unhappy with this particular reportage and the monies stated uh, therein. Um, we've seen the letter from her lawyers to multimedia um, suggesting that there's no truth with respect to the figures quoted and, and linked to her bank accounts. Um, I mean, it is in her right to demand such. Well, no, no, I, I wouldn't um, disagree with that. Mm. But let's ask ourselves honestly, um, who caused all of this? Mm. I mean, why is she crying foul? Mm. You shoot yourself in the foot and then you come crying to the public. How so? How did she shoot herself in you the see, foot? In the first place, what occasioned all of this? Mm. You have left the room for speculations because as of now, we don't even know how much really mm. is in her account. Right. And then also the, the, the uh, Office of the Special Prosecutor is not under any obligation to disclose exactly. how much is also in her account. Likewise, and so Adapa, you see, she, she um, to no one to disclose her, 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 the money in her account. I get your point, but you see, one fundamental truth mm. is that um, the the work of the journalist is to educate and then inform. Mm. Um, they go every length in making sure that they gather as much information mm. as possible. You see, it's within the right of the OSP not to disclose how much um, is in her account. Mm. But what also shows that the, the journalist has been also gone uh, their way to fish, uh, you know, for such information and then let the public be in the knowledge of it. And so if you ask me, um, she caused all of this in the first place. Mm. Um, it shouldn't have happened. Mm. Um, as and when the issue cropped up, she should have found a way to deal with it rather than you know, make it public, taking it mm. to the police station and all of that. And so... Um, no, but her monies had been stolen. You see... Um, um, we, learn, we learn from precedence. Mm. You were a public figure. Mm. You know you could have found an alternative, uh, another way of dealing with this issue rather than how she, she approached the whole thing. Um, reporting to the police meant that you were ready to go through everything. Mm. And that is what she's going through. So if you ask me, yes, the lawyers, you know, writing to multimedia, demanding an apology mm. and all of that, um, where did she get the monies from? Mm. That's the fundamental question. Well, that is being investigated. Uh, the OSP is currently investigating her for alleged corruption and corruption-related offenses. But all this started from the theft, alleged theft in her home. I mean, if I have money in my house uh, and my, my home staff or my domestic staff are stealing from me, clearly I need to report it so that the law takes its course. <laughs> Not so. I, I agree. Mm. But you see... Um, um, the, the issue with Cecilia Dapa is quite peculiar. Mm. Let's, let's go back to um, um, happenings in the, in the past. Right. Have we had issues of such nature before? And the obvious answer is yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, there have been ministers and, right. and government officials who have had mm. um, their, their you know, domestic staff or mm -hmm. if you like, aides, yeah. you know, uh, making away with sums of money. But at the end of the day, they were able to find alternative means of retrieving such money. Yes. And that is what I was expecting that Cecilia Dapa mm. perhaps would have also told the same line. But she decided to go public. And at the end of the day, 
look at the embarrassment she has caused not only to herself, mm. but to the government and even the president. And I even have a personal issue with the mm. president because when um, she submitted her resignation letter, mm. the president, to some extent, even before the issue or even before the OSP, the could, could uh, mm. uh, uh, invite her to, to, to a, 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 its outfit, mm. has preempted, if you mm. like, um, mm. the outcome of the mm. investigation. And that's why I have my challenge. Mm. Perhaps that was a great opportunity for the president to mm. have, you know, um, as it were, make it known to the public that, listen, in my government, there's no way I will condone any such form of corruption, mm. even if it is it's that attack, mm. you, you understand, whether alleged or not. Mm. And if you go ahead as the, as the, as the first gentleman mm. of the land, somebody fighting corruption, you know, and then you are seen to somehow prejudice some, some of these things, then it, it, it begs the question, really, mm. are we fighting the corruption that we, we are so, you know, out there singing mm. about? And so, yes, um, Cecilia, unfortunately, has uh, reported the issue to the police. Um, the case is before the court. Mm. The substantive case is not yet, um, mm. uh, is yet to be heard. Yeah. And so mm. unless and until the, the mm. substantive case is heard, that mm. is where we'll know whether or not indeed the, the monies are, are, are not from any form of corrupt activities mm. she may have, you know, uh, be, exactly. But if, if it is proven that those are monies that mm. she earned legitimately, mm. fair enough, we have no issue. But to the mm. extent that you have in excess of almost about 12 point something million dollars, you know, if all the monies are, 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 mm. are, are added together, then it really, you know, poses some form yeah, of well, question. We don't have confirmation on well, this well, total well, figure. Well, this well, 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 well. We have no confirmation I mean, on that. It, so. it's, it's all over. Mm. It's all over with the, with the, yeah, but it's with not the money. confirmed by anyone, uh, has uh, it? Uh, <laughs> I mean, just, just go to um, um, Joy. Joy mm. reported it. And but this even is aside what Joy, she's disclaiming. And, and that's the same issue mm. I'm also, you know, hammering about. I mean, to the, the fact that the OSP is not disclosing the, the, the figures in their account. Would, would you rather no have the OSP declare these figures? Because, see. you see, uh, I mean, she, she, she has the right to being innocent until proven otherwise. So until a prima facie is established against her, She's presumed innocent. And disclosing the amounts in these accounts will go against her privacy, wouldn't it? Nana, is there any law that um, prohibits the journalist from going further to fish information? If, uh, it, One, no. aside that, secondly, mm. I, I think that they are also not under any obligation to disclose their source of information. Mm. However, a competent co uh, court of... Uh, uh, adjudicator mm. can't compel them to, mm. to disclose their source mm. of information. So unless and until we get to that point mm. where the court says, hey, come and prove mm. where you got these from, mm. then I still stand by um, the report from Joy. That has, indeed, has, has Cecilia Dapa broken any law? Uh, as far as the laws of this country is concerned, no. So we are all judging her through a however, moral compass. However, you see, it's not even about the moral compass. Mm. You, as a public figure, mm. you, as um, an appointee of a ruling government mm. and somebody who used to head an institution mm. of repute, uh, you have so much money mm. in your home and there is a lot also to be done in uh, Kusase. Mm. There's a lot to be done in terms of health and even road and what have you. Mm. And one person is assumed to be having all these monies, you know. My uh, money, not state money. Hold on, money. hold on, hold on. It's not yet proven yet. Yes, so but if, it's in her home, so it is so, presumably so what if, hers. What if, what if at the end of the day, it is presumed that she got them illegally? How do we, how do we address that? That is a matter to be determined so later. So then we still but stand by the but, but we cannot ascribe her money to state projects. I mean, if there's work to be done in Kusase, the state should fund that, not Cecilia Dapa bringing money from her I, home. I am not disputing that, mm. but my point is that, listen, one person heading a public institution mm. is alleged to have in excess of about 12 million in both her account and in her house, her residence, both at Abelimpe and then um, Islegon, mm. right? If one person have so much monies, 
then the assumption is that every public official, every government appointee out there mm. is even in trouble. Mm. All right? If, if you're a politician and, and you are out there, especially if you, are, if you belong to the ruling party, the assumption is that, hey, you have so much monies in your homes and you, are, you become even a threat, mm. you know? And if you're not careful, we will see the cases of armed robbery, you know, going on the rise yes, just because of some of these, because some of these of things. Right. And so mm. I, I think that the earlier we, when I say we, I mean the state supports the OSP mm. in getting this issue resolved with the speed of light, the better mm. for all of us. Mm. Because, I mean, if you're a politician out there, I'm sure you are living in fear. You mm. could be attacked any, at any point in time. Mm. Why? Because somebody has paved the way for you to go, th go through some of these things. Mm. So uh, yes, I, 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 I support the call is, that... Is, is Cecilia Dapa being vilified because of her position as a public official? If these monies had been found in a private person's home, would it have been such a big deal in this country? And uh, you see, private is private. Mm. Public is public. Private person does his you know, job mm. and then gets his money whichever means, right? Mm. But you are a public figure. Taxpayers With private money, businesses. Taxpayers' money is involved. Mm. And listen, I have personal interest because, I mean, uh, at COPEC, we, we monitor every single thing when it comes mm. to um, 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 prices of fuel, mm. all right? And there's an element mm. on the price buildup where we pay to uh, the, the sanitation ministry, ministry, and that's the sanitation levy. Mm. All right. And so I am particularly interested mm. in knowing the legality or otherwise mm. of the sources of her funds. Mm. So that at the end of the day, all of us mm. could be rest assured that uh, the monies we pay at the pumps mm. goes directly to funding uh, the businesses of, of, the, of the sanitation ministry. Oh, but, but, I and doubt, not, but I doubt the taxes I am not paying saying, will I am go saying. into the sanitation ministry. <laughs> I am not saying. Well, 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 that's another discussion to be had. It, it wouldn't day. go directly to the ministry. Oh, no, that, I mean, that, that's something that goes. It goes, there, there, it goes there, to there's, them. There's, there's a channel, right? The MPA receives mm -hmm. it on their behalf, and, okay. then, and then they receive the monies in that order. So mm -hmm. um, I am particularly interested in that because I feel... Um, she owes us that, that, mm. you know, that bit um, mm. um, for us to know whether or not mm. there is any uh, form of um, um, uh, legality, mm. if you like, um, regarding the sources of funds, yes. Well, now it's a matter under investigation, so I doubt she as an individual is going to come out uh, and put out the figures there. Mind you, these are her personal bank accounts, not state accounts. So, I mean, she owes none of us that information. Um, no, no. But you think if she comes out, this puts the matter to rest? No, she, she doesn't even need to come out, mm. right? The point is that um, there's a case before the court. Mm. What is the case? The Which case, case is, that is the thefts? The OSP, no, even before that. Mm. The OSP is um, um, more or less going through the process mm. to freeze yes. you know, her account. Administratively, the OSP can do that. But then Fair it will enough. go to court you to need the court. to yes. prolong yes. Yes. The, the period. But mm -hmm. you see, um, why does the minister or the former minister keep changing her chat sheet? Mm. Have you asked yourself that question? Mm. Why, why does it keep changing? Today, um, we have $800,000 that belonged to my late brother. Mm. And then the next minute, we are told the 800000 is mine. And so the million dollars is mine. Mm. Why do we have conflicting church seats almost every time? Mm -hmm. And so I, I think that there's still something fundamentally wrong uh, as far as the mm. source of funds are concerned. And like I said, um, the state needs to throw its weight behind the OSP mm. and the police um, um, uh, prosecutors mm. in making sure that this issue is resolved with the speed of light, I repeat. Mm. And so um, I, I don't think that we have that much time uh, mm. uh, as a luxury on our hands. It's, it's interesting you mentioned the state support in this particular case because mm. we've seen the Attorney General request for the docket to provide some advice or, or on this same matter. What do you make of the Attorney General's I mean, uh, office wading into the Cecilia da Paz uh, allegedly stolen money? Okay, so the Office of the Special Prosecutor, mm. if you like, is a miniature of the Attorney General. Mm. Now, they derive their powers from the Attorney General mm. by virtue of its establishment. And so if mm. your mother is deciding that, hey, um, I want to know what you are doing and what you have been up to, there's nothing wrong with that. However, where 
it decides to use its power to usurp uh, the powers of, of the OSP. Yes. That is where I have a challenge mm. because I feel that um, the OSP must be independent mm. and should be able to go mm. after um, whoever is alleged to have been engaged in any corrupt and corruption related mm. activities. And I, I, I wish that um, the, the, the Attorney General's office will work hand in hand mm. uh, with the Office of the Special mm. Prosecutor in making sure that uh, this matter is resolved. Well, so far, what we know, uh, the Attorney General has not interfered in the investigations by the OSP, mm. but rather um, is interested in the theft case. The theft case mm. is where the Office of the Attorney General um, is providing some advice on. If, had this been an individual, a private person, would it have caught the attention of the Attorney General? I think so. Um, you remember uh, not too long ago the issue at, um, uh, uh, was it Boche? Uh, in, in, fan, in fan supreme or something like that, um, we we had or we saw that attorney general. Oh, that Adisado uh, assault case. I, I should right. think so. I'm right. sorry. I'm sorry, but you Adisa, forgive Adisado me. Adisado uh, Forgive me, <laughs> The so, mobile boys will come after you. Exactly. So um, we we all saw what mm. happened. You know, the the attorney general mm. being in there. You know, every step mm. of the way, making sure that um, perpetrators were mm. brought to book. So. I'm sure they would have paid the same attention if it were a private, you know, mm. um, um, person. But mm. most especially being a government person and mm. also um, the ruling government's uh, um, um, former minister, mm. I think it, it, has, uh, it should have an mm. interest uh, in making sure that the issue is resolved um, um, as fast as possible. Mm. It should, like I said, it should support the OSP. Mm. In, in gathering the necessary information, go through all mm. the investigation that it has to go through, all the needed resources that the OSP will need in, in, in fast tracking mm. this this um, investigation mm. uh, should be given to them. Mm. And I want I want I will wish that the, the the Attorney General will work in tandem with um, the Office of the Special Prosecutor in making sure that everything that they need every resource that they need, every mm. help, every support that they will need. You, you recall um, um, a fortnight ago we were here uh, to push for the Office of the, uh, the Special Prosecutor to, to start some form of investigation mm. into this matter. And, yeah. and I think that even before the program mm. ended from here, uh, we saw uh, a release yeah, from, the, yeah. from the outfit. So uh, I am, I'm fully in support of um, uh, an attorney general mm. who wants to work um, with the OSP mm. in getting the matter resolved. Yeah. Right. That, I mean, you see, I'm interested in the attention this particular case is getting because, Paul, admittedly, there are 1,001 theft cases, <laughs> dockets of which are lying on shelves and tables <laughs> of... <laughs> with the police and in, in the courts. You, you understand? See, Nana, Nana, uh, sorry to cut you, but, but the truth must be told. Okay. I, I'm not sure, sorry. I'm not sure um, those issues that you have, you know, mm. uh, uh, mentioned uh, involve such huge sums of monies. No, that that, I, I mean, and especially I, I get so it. when it involves mm. uh, 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 a government official. You know, official. So um, there's everything wrong. But, but with, it's what is good for the goose, not good for the gander. Uh, uh, no, no, you see, you again. see sh should, should the <laughs> law not be fair in its application? Because you see, this might be a huge sum involving a public figure. But for maybe Kwesi Bedu in, in some village somewhere, that 200 CDs is, is all he's got and someone has stolen it. And he needs justice for that as well. I, I am not disputing that. But you see, again, I'll still come back to my issue. This involves mm. the taxpayers' money. Somebody who has been at the helm of affairs mm. at, at the Ministry of Aviation um, went ahead to become Minister of Sanitation, was even the caretaker minister mm. for the gender and social protection at some right. time back. Mm. And so if um, she was holding all these positions mm. and at the end of the day, um, we have had cause to believe that something untoward may have happened, mm. then um, it is not out of place mm. if we... Uh, decide to, you know, investigate her and then at the end of the day come out with whether or not um, the monies that are, were found in her house mm. and those that were are, are in her accounts uh, are, 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 were sourced legally. Mm. And if they were legally acquired, we have no comes with that. 
-hmm. But if to the extent that the taxpayer's money is, is used to pay you so much and at the end of the day, we have a reason to believe that you, you may have been engaged mm -hmm. in, in some form of practice mm -hmm. to, to acquire the money, then there is everything wrong with it. The woman has lost money. She's a victim of a theft case. <laughs> Which same case has today cost her her job? She has resigned from her position as a minister of state. If at the end of the investigations, mm. it is found out that there's nothing untoward, would we have been fair to Sisi Adapa? Um, Nana, to be very honest with you, we have. Um, nobody is vilifying her. I think that she is going through the normal process as everyone else who mm. may have been engaged in one form of our practice, quote and unquote. These are still allegations, all right? Mm. And um, the, the natural you, you justice see, we, demands. We, we that keep saying these are allegations. What exactly is the allegation against Cecilia <laughs> Adapa? You, you see what the problem is? If, if, if you want us to go back to the issue, why not? We'll, we'll go back to it. I mean, she went to the police station. Nobody put a gun to her neck to go to the police station. Because her money had been stolen. Great. And so you went to the police mm -hmm. station to allege that um, somebody or your mates may have made away with your money. Fair enough. Where did you get the money from? Who is asking her this question? We have every right to ask. <laughs> I mean, you're citizens. I mean, the president asked me to be, mm -hmm. uh, uh, what do you call it? A citizen, uh, not a citizen a and not a spectator. Mm. And so I'm being a citizen by making sure that um, by virtue of the taxpayer's money mm. that is used you know, in paying mm. you, you rendered your service and whatever you have in your home was acquired legally. Mm. And so you went to the police station to allege uh, that your monies have been stolen. Fair enough. The police received you warmly. Uh, they went through the process. Uh, corporates were brought. Mm. The same people you claim are, 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 are the, uh, the engineers behind the theft. Mm. And further investigations revealed that it was not just the mm. $1 million, but also uh, 300,000 uh, euros, some mm. millions of Ghana cities, and, and all of that. Invest further investigations by the OSP and even other mm. media outlets revealed that there was more. Mm. And so if at the end of the day um, we can you know, say that these monies were acquired legally, I don't think that we we'll owe Cecilia Adapa any form of apology. You don't think so? I don't think so. She would have gone through the mail, just like everyone else, and come out, and then at the end of the day, we can all praise her and say, hey, you did a yeoman's job, congratulations, well done. But if it is otherwise, then I believe the law should take its course. Right, mm. right. Okay. Well, well, there's a subject of investigation. Right. Uh, we're waiting for the outcome of a same, and then, of course, we we'll all know indeed uh, the truth of the matter as it stands. But this is still Breakfast Daily here on CTTV. Stay with us. We'll be right back. <laughs> Ever mobile phones, television, air conditioning, speakers, computers, laptops. We need to Franco Trading Enterprise. And that's why you're number one. So open phones, papa pa and one huan kadi. Ani border from so cool. Fu 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 fu. Phones be to say Nokia, Samsung, iPhone, Infinix, Huawei, Estigi, Alcatel. Any phone be a open we be a simu be a. And your Franco Trading Enterprise. Bora your shop with beer and we're gonna have fun with beer. Now come play with me. I feel so. Mama put some mutu in the soup bowl. Me check the brain and the dodo on it now. Aye, Franco Trading Enterprise. Franco Trading Enterprise. Aye, full papa pa. Any accessories papa pa. I envy. I think that I'm saying is a mental problem. It's a mental problem. It's a mindset problem. That you think you can steal today and still eat your cake tomorrow. Mm -hmm. I think that, uh, if you could go to the next slide, if I, uh, that we have to appreciate to fix and restore is always more expensive than to spoil. Mm -hmm. Spoiling takes an instant. Yeah. 
those of you who are in married or relationships, you you slap your your spouse. I'm not recommending this. <laughs> it, it takes a second to do that action, but I'm telling you, pay for it for the for rest, rest of your of life. Your life, yes. So, it is better not to spoil it in the first place. My third point is that a full-time problem like Galamse cannot be solved by part-time responses. In such a human the source water we said is uh, prayer, and then these are the supply areas. The whole of Sacheriman sends water to Elmina, and then also augments the supply from Brimsu to serve the whole of Cape Coast. It has um, a production uh, capacity of uh, 30,000 cubic meter per day, which is uh, 6.7 mgd, that's million gallons of water per day. But currently, because of Galamse and other issues, we only do about 47% capacity utilization. And then the, the losses that we I mean, incur through the production process is about 10 to 20 percent. There are interesting figures for um, the color and turbidity over a period. This is a, we are using the base year of 2016 to current uh, figures. And from such a man, when the turbidity is beyond 1,800 MTU, the system cannot run. Currently, how long you say on the plant has actually doubled. And then you have the treatment costs also going up there by 50%. Next slide, please. And your costs move into, is that 93,000 yes, per, per month? Yes, From coming from what figure? From about 60,000. So 60,000, you're now putting an extra of at least 30,000. That's right. For you to give us less water. What? Yes. Okay. Then in Konongo, we have a, um, a plant that has been designed to do about 19,000 cubic meter of water per day. Welcome back. This is Breakfast Daily on City TV. We're having the newspaper review segment now. Um, Mensa Thompson is here, Executive Director, Alliance for Social Equity and Public Accountability, ASEPA. Good morning, Mensa. Good morning, my I trust brother. you're doing well. Oh, thank you. I'm welcome, doing very welcome, well. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How was your weekend? Oh, it was great. It's quite relaxing. I, I like yeah. your shirt and your suit. Uh, really you see, I've told you that when mm. I grow up, I want to be like you, so it's more small. <laughs> oh, really? It's more small. You don't pass me. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, just before you came in, uh, we were looking at um, Cecilia Dapa, the former sanitation and uh, water resources minister's issue. The new twist is that um, she's demanding a retraction and apology from multimedia over publications of certain figures she denies are in her bank account. So I'll give you a quick bite on that and then we can move on. Yes. Uh, f uh, first of all, a very good morning to our cherished uh, viewers mm -hmm. out there. And to say that I think the lawyers of Cecilia Dapa would do her, would do her a lot of good if they don't go on that tangent. Mm. And I think that it is only in Ghana that, you know, um, ministers of state embroiled in such, you know, controversies of corruption mm. can threaten legal action. In, in other jurisdictions, they'll, be, they'll even be grasping for their own life, you know. Well, but she's resigned and subjected herself to investigations. Yes, but, you know, you, you know, she can't threaten to sue anybody. And... I don't know wherever they are getting that confidence from. And I think it's also from the posture of the Office of the Special Prosecutor. Mm. When I saw the statement of the Office of the Special Prosecutor last week, I was taken aback. Which of the statements? The statement the one denying the publication, denying the publication of, the of the figures of, the, mm. of mm. her bank account, the right. minister's bank account. You see, the Office of the Special Prosecutor, first, did not make any publication Mm. about the frozen account of Madame Sela mm. They did not tell us, the citizens, that, mm. oh, in respect of the investigation mm. regarding Madame Sela mm. the former Minister for Sanitation, as part of our investigations, mm. we have frozen 
maybe three, four, five bank accounts of the minister pending investigations. Mm. The OSP did not. The public only got to hear about it through um, leaked publications mm. from media houses. Mm. But the OSP really does not have to come out. The OSP went to court. No, no. And court documents are a matter of public no. record. Hold on, hold on. You can't say the OSP does mm -hmm. not come out. When the OSP invited Madame Siradapa mm -hmm. for questioning, mm. did he issue a statement or not? He did. Why did he issue a statement? Because it's a public interest matter mm. and the public must be informed every step of the way. So when accounts were frozen, mm. the public should have been informed. Mm -hmm. We should have been updated about the status of the investigations mm. every now and then. Mm. He didn't. And he left a big room for speculation, only for court documents to leak, mm. that certain accounts have been frozen. Mm. And then people started you know, doing their own investigations mm. and peddling numbers out. You can't blame them. But the special prosecutor even did a, as even worse. <laughs> he did an even more disservice mm. with that statement. By issuing a statement supposedly to clarify those numbers being peddled about mm -hmm. without providing any alternative or accurate numbers to say these are the numbers, what you're putting out is, is wrong. Yeah, but you, you see, that's, I have a little problem with the, should the OSP go ahead and put out the numbers? Because, you see, it's a matter under investigation. Investigation which how can did go we know that, either way. My brother, how did we know mm. that the money that we're stolen were $1 million, 300000 uh, 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 euros and millions of cities. That is the report C.C. Adapa made to the police. Uh -huh. So we got to know from court documents. Uh -huh. Right. Okay. Uh, what is the special prosecutor doing? The it's special not an prosecutor has come out to tell us monies he, his office or officials from his office found in her home. That is 590,000 uh, USD in cash and, and, and some, I think, 2.73 million cities. Didn't they deny that one as well? Mm. No, the OSP has confirmed that. You see? But it is the bank accounts. Okay. That's the OSP. Why would the denying. OSP confirm mm. money found in their home but will not publish money found in their bank accounts? What is the difference? Mm. Are there no money for the same person? I mean, this is, pardon my ignorance, but this is, no. the investigation is based on a theft in her home. I'm saying that. I'm saying that this matter has been moved beyond theft. I mean, when I hear people talking about theft, who is a thief here? But that is the actual case. <laughs> no, <court>. please, please, <laughs> please. <laughs> you see, this money, this this matter has moved mm. beyond mm. some mates stealing the this one that money. you're taking off your glasses. This, <laughs> this matter has moved beyond that long ago. Mm. Where we are now, we are at a stage where we are citizens. Mm are beginning to question the planetary of our ministers of state, mm -hmm. whom we have, you, you know, handed so much resources to administer in the interest of this country. Mm. When ordinary citizens who have served in this country for so many years don't even have a penny in their bank account mm. or in their savings account. Mm. And we have ministers having millions in their homes. So the, this matter shouldn't be treated. I, I don't even want to delve into the Attorney General's interference in, in this matter. Mm. I want to stay on the Special Prosecutor that. If you believe that numbers are being peddled around mm. that are false, you owe us the public to tell us what the true numbers are. Mm. And not only come and say that the numbers you are putting out are false. Mm. How do we know they are false? How do we know that the OSP is telling the truth? Mm. How do we know that the OSP is not involved in a cover-up? Mm. And so, Based on that, then Madam Sia, the past lawyers come out and say that, look, the OSP says the numbers you are putting out is false. Mm. So if you don't retract, I'm going to sue you. Mm. Look at this. this. This is prime. This is kindergarten, you know, a, a, a <laughs> games you are playing with us. <laughs> it's the same way when we were told that the money belongs to Madam Sia, the past late brother. Mm -hmm. A few days later, the child sheet was changed. Her wife. Mm. Sorry, the, the late brother's wife mm. sued the minister to recover mm. 800. Please, this theatrics, I think that they should credit us with some, some mm. level of intelligence. Right. I, 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 I have a lot of sympathies for Madame Sile mm. I mean, it's unfortunate she's been mm. caught in this kind of stuff. Yeah. But I think that her lawyers are not doing her any, in, in, in any service mm. if they go on this tangent. Mm. I think that they will, they will court public disaffection mm. for her. 
So they should rather, have advised against yes, it. Yes, rather, mm. rather, she, the accused person, mm. should have faith and confidence in our, in our judicial process mm. and an investigative process. Mm. So have faith and confidence mm. that any proper investigation mm. will truly ascertain mm. the truth of this matter. And so, instead of her coming out, allow mm. the OSP to complete their investigation and come and say that even the, the amount of monies mm. paddled out were false. Mm. An investigation report will make all that public. Mm. She could be vindicated and, 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 and we cannot move on. Mm. But when they start threatening legal action, against journalists doing a media house, doing their legitimate business, mm -hmm. trying to put fear in the media, you know, and, and try to sway the media away from continuously following and reporting on this matter, mm -hmm. I think that will court public disaffection for the woman and her All lawyers right. mm -hmm. should know better. Okay, mm -hmm. let's leave it here. Let's move into some other stories. Now, the Ghana Cocoa Board um, is saying that it will no longer... Uh, and embark on road projects. Now, I'll take you to citynewsroom.com. I mean, the story is captured in most of the papers. A daily guide says Cocoa Road projects will be completed. This is according to Cocoa Board. A number of the dailies have it, but let's take the story of citynewsroom.com. Cocoa Board to hold construction of new, new Cocoa Roads. Emphasis on new. Um, the Ghana Cocoa Board, Cocoa Board has announced that it will no longer undertake the construction of Cocoa Roads across the country after the completion of ongoing ones, the Cocoa Road program by Cocoa Board was initiated to address the transportation challenges faced in bringing agro inputs to cocoa farmers in those communities and evacuating cocoa beans to take over centers. However, in an address at the 50th anniversary celebration symposium on the cocoa of the Cocoa Clinic, uh, the Chief Executive Officer of Cocoa Board, Joseph Boahin Edu, said the policy will be scrapped following negotiations with the European Union and the International Monetary Fund, IMF. Quote, the EU sent a team last year to do due diligence on sustainable production. And when they came, they wanted to know why Cocoa Board was involved in Cocoa Roads construction because it is not a core business of Cocoa Board. And they insisted that we take that venture out of our equation. And of course, the IMF is also saying <laughs> the same thing. They say that we can continue with what we are currently constructing and not start new ones, end quote. Joseph Wahin Edu is the uh, CEO of the Ghana Cocoa Board. And according to him, um, I don't want to say uh, uh, dictates or instructions, but uh, uh, more or less is from the EU and the IMF. Mm. Questioning why Cocoa Board uh, is engaged in the construction of roads. And so... Per what he is saying, new ones will not, new projects will not be embarked on, but existing ones will be completed. We know the importance of cocoa roads. If this should really be a, a policy that will be rolled out, what are the challenges thereof? You see, I think that this is a good thing. It's very, very important that cocoa, mm. cocoa boss stay away from this and focus on their key areas. Mm. Because there are a lot of challenges in the mm. cocoa sector itself that need mm. you know, investment, that need a proper technical mm. you know, you know, uh, evaluation and address. Mm. And, and putting those, those policies mm. you know, to the benefit, especially of the cocoa farmers and the people mm. who sweat and blood you know, give us mm. these uh, revenues we derive. Mm. But I, 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 I mean, it's so strange how, mm. you know, in Ghana we introduce policies mm. and all of a sudden we lose the policy direction itself and began to veer into absurdities. Right. What was the, you know, the, the rationale behind this Cocoa Road? Mm. The Cocoa Road project was just to provide, you know, road infrastructure for mm. cocoa growing areas. areas. Mm. Because at some point we realized that most of the cocos were rotting away mm. in the farms because of lack of access mm. you know, to transport these cocos mm. from the farms to the storage facilities right. in the, across, mm. across the country. And so Cocoa Boss said, look, since we are the entity overseeing that, mm -hmm. let's come up with a policy where we can invest mm. you know, to improve on the road infrastructure mm. in those cocoa growing areas. Mm. Mm. 
until we started seeing Coco Rose in Accra. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, where we don't grow any cocoa. <laughs> where, where even maize cannot grow maize. <laughs> <laughs> mm. And we left the cocoa. Now most of the co cocoa growing areas go to the western mm. region and see oh, cut out from mm. access. Yeah, and cocoa rows are being, you know, mm. uh, 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 being done in Chebi and and, mm. and, and four layer asphalt in the eastern region, mm. in places where all they know is Galamsey, mm. but they are doing cocoa roads there. And so sometimes you wonder, you know, why our policies always end up this way. Mm -hmm. Because the cocoa rose was a fantastic initiative. Mm. And cocoa boss should have stuck with it. By now, if you look at the period where it was introduced, by now, we shouldn't have any cocoa growing area without yeah. access road. Yeah. Mm. But now, the urban areas began to take away even mm. the, the, the cocoa rose projects, mm. leaving very little for the cocoa growing areas mm. themselves. And the farmers still struggle to take the cocoa, you know, to their various areas mm -hmm. after, uh, after harvesting. Mm. That is ridiculous. Again, cocoa board itself has now become the most, the most, I, 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 I'm, I'm looking for a very, a very good word to, to describe. <laughs> Please do. Yes. <laughs> we don't want any problems this morning. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you see... Mm. Coco Board, mm. they become one of the most wasteful state institutions mm. ever. SOE. Wasteful. Mm. They are so wasteful. Coco, I don't even, I can't find the right word to describe Coco Board. Mm. If you look at Coco Board's balance sheet and you see where their huge expenditures are, mm. you wonder whether, whether they are Coco Board or they are Cash Board. <laughs> really? If you look at their balance mm. sheet and you see where the huge, huge expenditures are, mm. you wonder the, whether these people they are overseeing cocoa or they are they, are, they overseeing their own pockets. Mm. Cocoa board for 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 a while were in charge of this, you know helping government raise this syndicated facility mm -hmm. every, every year. Yeah. Mm. This year, government is going to struggle mm -hmm. to raise the syndicated loans. That's true. We are going to struggle. Yeah. Because government also has also meddled. They, they've also somehow used Cocoa Board as a cover. Mm to borrow and then divert it and use it for needless stuff. Mm. Just like the Bank of Ghana. I don't know if, I, I think Coco Board and Bank of Ghana are twin brothers. <laughs> I think they are twins. <laughs> See, we have, what we are discussing is Bank of Ghana's audited financial statements mm -hmm. for 2022. Yeah. <laughs> Woe betide Ghanaians if Coco Board's audited financial statement for 2022 come out. We should all brace ourselves mm. because the kind of things we are going to be seeing. Mm. See, we we'll say, oh, Bank of Ghana, you are, Bank of Ghana, you are, in fact, mm. yours is so, so well. Come and see your other brother, Coco Board. Mm -hmm. and, and that statement, it must be published now. Right. We need to know mm. because, come on, Coco Board should have been an entity by now. Mm. That was set up, the primary objective was Cocoa Board, mm. really, was to advance the well-being of the farmers. Mm. The well-being of the mm. farmers who spend their entire life in these farms mm. to plant these, things, these cocoa that give us, you know, huge foreign mm. exchange. That contributes enormously to our GDP every year. Mm. That was the purpose of Cocoa Board. Mm. Cocoa Board has failed in its mandate. Mm. Right. Cocoa Board has already, Cocoa Board has rather mm. created rich technocrats in Accra. Mm. Rich big people who, are, who don't even know the road to farms. Mm. Driving in huge land cruisers, building mega mansions, and doing big, big, big business on, on, on the back of Cocoa Board. Mm -hmm. And they don't even know where the farm is. 
and still go to the farm, go to the rural areas and see the ordinary farmer suffering really badly. Right. Let me get to Paul and take uh, his take on, on this. This morning, I mean, on our 6 a.m. news, a group calling itself Consent Farmers Association mm. is complaining about the halting uh, of uh, the construction or the Cocoa Road construction program by Cocoa Board. They are unhappy with it. They would rather that Cocoa Board continues with the program. Okay, uh, just to take um, over from where um, Thompson left off. You see, the core mandate, really, of Cocoa Board you know, was to make sure we, we get the cocoa from the cocoa growing mm. areas, you know, export them, get their monies, pay the farmers and all of that. Mm -hmm. Make sure the, the welfare of the farmer is also attended to. And by way of that, they introduced what is called the, the scholarship scheme of mm. some sort to, to help the farmers and, and their kids. Mm -hmm. and, and then and they also brought in the issue of health and, and all of that. And then the twin baby, um, co cocoa rose. Yeah. Uh, unfortunately, that objective um, has become partisan, if you like, mm -hmm. and it's taking a political twist. Um, uh, if ideally the objective was to um, was adhered to, I'm not sure um, we would have been going through these kind of debts mm -hmm. that cocoa board finds itself now. Between 2016 2017, uh, in excess of 9.6 billion owed to road contractors. Um, 2018 2019, these are these are figures that were paid actually to to road con 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 contractors. 2018 2019, some 550 million um, CDs. Uh, 2019 2020, 123 uh, million CDs to road contractors so within that it would be period to know where these roads oh, were, where were constructed. Ah, that's another question yeah. you see the challenge is that even after a year of mm -hmm. the completion of some of these roads mm -hmm. you go there and you find virtually an empty yeah. <laughs> an empty place mm -hmm. and you wonder whether really where 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 whether this was there the was place that the construction, the construction took place mm -hmm. so um their core mandate functions unfortunately um, have been diverted mm -hmm. and and I don't see why they should have even involved themselves in the first place uh, in the construction of the road that should have been left to the central government mm. uh, to be dealing with it but unfortunately it became political mm. and and uh, politicians were using that to score political points that mm. oh we've done so much of cocoa rose mm. and, and 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 they were taking the credit for it mm -hmm. unfortunately the, it, it, mm. we are left with huge debts you know, like he mentioned, you go through the balance sheet of Cocoa Board and you ask yourself, really? Mm. Just last month, um, somewhere 2018, um, sorry, 28th July of, of last month, mm. at, the, at the Public Accounts Committee, um, the CEO was struggling to um, report mm. on, on, on exactly how much they have paid contractors even from 2020 to date. Mm. And, and they are demanding for that report as we speak. They don't have the figures. Well, they did mm. publish Cocoa so Board's audited <laughs> financial statement. It's sad. They, they did publish mm. their own. Mm. It's sad. Mm. We'll run away. Even, even with the scholarship that was introduced, mm. you, you agree with me that the farmers that really were supposed to be the Benefits end beneficiaries yeah. did not. Mm. And we have sons of politicians and children of politicians and government appointees mm. who are rather, you know, uh, 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 as it were, benefiting From rather than scheme. the people mm. who they really, don't even get you know, but were the, the, intended the road, to the receive. The road construction program. By so, Cocoa so halting it. Hold on, halting mm -hmm. it. Sorry, um, halting it. Um, mm. I believe is in the best interest of our country. Mm. We didn't need the IMF and the EU to come telling us that mm. um, you, you are diverting or deviating from, from your, your core mandate. mandate, therefore stick mm. to your core mandate. We didn't need them to do that. Mm. Cocoa Board as an institution is a state-owned enterprise. Mm. They, even though they have, um, their uh, government has some level of control over mm. them, they could have still gone to parliament and say that, look, we cannot continue with the way government is also always on our but, neck. But you see, the problem was this. initiated to solve a problem. Cocoa was getting rotten on the farms due to lack of accessible roads. No, 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 let's not justify this. Whose responsibility mm. is it in making sure that road infrastructure is dealt with in this country? The states. Good. But if I am a state agency and I am in a I, position I perfectly to, understand you on that. to yeah. benefit my sector, why Paul, not? Paul, so, no, no. Uh, Paul, you see, mm. Cocoa Boss intervention was not wrong. 
I mean, even though it's a state responsibility to provide mm. those basic infrastructure, Cocoa Ball's intervention was, at least, if Cocoa Ball could reserve some funds mm -hmm. to intervene in areas where, due to limited resources, government could not mm -hmm. you know, provide those yeah. access routes on time. Mm. It only got absurd mm. when now, if you look at that, if you take a list of the Cocoa Rules Cocoa that are Rose. being constructed now, mm -hmm. and look at the number of the rules coming from Cocoa Growing Areas, mm -hmm. and look at the number of rules in urban areas. Mm. So, so by now, because the that, that Cocoa Board's intervention mm. in road construction should not be a permanent activity of Cocoa Board. Exactly. Cocoa and by Board, now, all Cocoa roads should, should have, have been, been done, and, and Cocoa Board would have now moved back exactly. to their core mandate and left so that aspect for government to continue. It's a failed program. It's a failed policy by mm. Cocoa Board. Yeah. It's a failed policy by Cocoa Board. But, and but government's own interference in the activities of Cocoa Board. We, should, we just have to blame the central bank yeah. for all of this. Mm. All right? By virtue of you know, interfering in the activities of Cocoa Board, that is where we are. Where we are. Mm. And so if indeed, yes, it's stuck to its core mandate, mm. like you know, uh, some of these incentives just yeah. to make sure that we get mm. the cocoa you know, exported, get mm. a foreign exchange and all of that. If it's stuck to its mandate, mm -hmm. I'm not sure these debts that um, uh, is strung around the neck of, of, mm. of Cocoa Board will be the case mm. now. It, it's unfortunate we have to find ourselves mm. here. But like I said, it has to stop somewhere. Mm. So Cocoa mm. Board has to stop the construction of roads mm. in cocoa growing areas, quote and unquote, because we know that it's not happening in cocoa uh, growing mm. areas. Right. They should rather stop Central the government construction of cocoa roads in urban areas. They should cancel all those in non cocoa <laughs> growing areas. areas. How do you even justify mm. it? In non cocoa growing areas. <laughs> how, how do you even justify it? How do you put cocoa roads in Accra? How do you put cocoa roads in Accra? Well, they now they, they've, if they've the road admitted. is not constructed, how, how mm. does the cocoa get how here? How do you put cocoa roads in Accra? No, my point is they will also insist and tell you that. I mean, the justifications will come to Exactly. So then now that they've agreed to the just end it. There's no more room for the justification. Mm. The cocos are still rotting Rotten in the farms. Mm -hmm. And so we have regional center storage facilities. Mm -hmm. We have cocoa uh, storage mm. facilities across the, across the country. I agree. Yeah. And, and most of the time, mm. the cocoa growing uh, storage facilities are placed at sometimes 5, 10 kilometers away from mm. the cocoa farms. Right. So all you need is access from the farms to those mm. storage facilities. Mm -hmm. Why do you come and put cocoa in Ramasamai? Right. Now the project is no more. I mean, ongoing <laughs> projects will be completed, but new ones will not be uh, started. We have just a few minutes to go. I just need your thoughts briefly on the Niger issue and ECOWAS decision to go in there. Um, the minority is pushing for diplomacy and not military intervention. But then again, it looks like the minority, it's, I don't know, they're, they're, they're not in agreement. Okujeto is pushing for diplomacy. Mahama Yariga is lauding ECOWAS's decision to move in there with the military. Quickly, let me pick your thoughts on that, Thompson. Uh, first of all, l mm. let me just, on, on a very quick one, mm. caution ECOWAS mm. that if they want to take any intervention in Niger, they should go and take it in the ECOWAS headquarters in Abuja. Mm. They shouldn't come and take that decision in Ghana. Mm. Yesterday, we were aware there was some planned meeting of ECOWAS uh, military chiefs mm. that was supposed to decide on an intervention in Niger. Mm. Please. Accra cannot be used as a launch pad mm. for any intervention against mm. another African country. Mm. And, and the, the government must desist from that. Mm. We, are, we are going to protest if by any reason government allows ECOWAS to come and meet in Accra to take mm. any intervention in Niger. Mm. Right. The, in, the, the issue in Niger needs diplomacy. Mm. It needs diplomacy. In whose interest is ECOWAS going? Mm. To topple the, uh, the government in Niger. Mm. How many coups have happened on the continent? Yes, but it's, but we have Guinea, just we just have Mali, a, we have Burkina Faso. Have the courts intervened in Guinea? Well, perhaps has now. Have the intervened <laughs> in, in Mali, mm -hmm. in Burkina Faso, mm. and they and the military? So why is why why the specific you know agency to intervene in Niger? Mm. Why? Perhaps they feel the time is right. No, okay. no, mm. because if you are doing you know. It, Foreign policy, international mm. law should be equally applied to right. all states. Right. Let me let me pick four thoughts quickly, on this. Let me end on that. If mm. if if Guinea is under military rule mm. for 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 almost mm. two years now, you have not intervened. Mm. No military action. Mali, Burkina Faso mm. have all followed suit. Mm. No intervention. And Niger follows, and you say, as for Niger, I'm, mm. mobiling, I'm mobilizing troops to go and intervene, to restore democracy. <laughs> so you are passing Burkina Faso mm -hmm. to go and restore, restore democracy mm -hmm. in Niger. 
Please, well, this sort of hypocrisy. And it is this sort of hypocrisy mm. by, by the ECOWAS set of states mm. that is creating most of these problems. And, mm. and, and I always say this, that ECOWAS is a, is a club of old people. Mm. Club of old people <laughs> protecting each other. Thank you, very, Thompson. Very useless thank you, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Thompson. Paul, nah, your take on this right. quickly nah, in nah, a few nah, seconds. Nah. First and foremost, mm. what is the moral right of mm. ECOWAS, you know, in all of this, in the first place? Mm. Guinea, Burkina Faso, what did they do? Okay, so is it just because of Niger, um, because the, um, uh, among the first 10 poorest countries, they find themselves on the, either number seven or number eight? Mm. Is that where their interest lies? Or because uh, of, of, of what we get from their country? Mm. Really, what, what's the rush here? That one week ultimatum uh, given to the junta to um, uh, cede power to uh, a democratically elected um, mm. person really doesn't add up. All right. The chiefs were supposed to have met on Saturday. Mm. Unfortunately, the meeting did not come off, which I am happy about. And, and I hope it stays so. If they step foot in Accra, if Second, ECOWAS don't know and they step foot in Accra to come and take any decision down. on the day, we, we, we will protest. We will protest. No, no, no. These are a sovereign country. These are a sovereign country. You see, this is a sovereign country. You see, yes, so we protest. Though, don't say well, there's nothing we can do. We have something that we can do. Even we though, citizens can tell our government not to not to accept that. Even though the government has signed. It's raining the heat on. To go and make it's a government not part of the It's a president, not the immediate part. Uh, uh, right, yes. Chairman so, of your, your, so your president should and be taking it's not a under his stance. watch. It's not under his watch that we've seen all these military coups. <laughs> or in, 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 so, no, 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 what, what I'm saying oh, is briefly, oh, yeah, briefly before we just, go. We are, um, we've run out of time. Yes, I know. Mm. What I'm saying essentially is that, listen, um, ECOWAS does not have the mm. moral right to intervene in any of this. Mm. They, they, even though um, um, Niger has signed on to the mm. ECOWAS protocols mm. and even international laws, yes, we agree. But just like Obama said, each nation gives life to democracy in its own right. Mm. All right? So Niger has every right mm. in making sure they protect what they have. The citizens have learned right, and they know that, mm. yes, things were not working in their favor, mm. and so they had to take the law into their own hand. I'm not saying it's the right thing to do, mm. but at that material right, moment, Paul, thank perhaps you. that's thank what you, they thank needed. You. Unfortunately, we've run out of time. Quickly, quickly 30 seconds. We've run out of quickly, time. 30 seconds. Mesa, I'm don't, saying that quickly. Say, just 30 don't seconds. Say, we have no just, time. Just 30 seconds. Let me wrap up. Just 30 seconds. Just 30 seconds. Just 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Thank you for Just 30 seconds, please. Thank you very much. Mesa Thompson, Executive Director. Alliance for Social <laughs> Equity and Public Accountability, ASEPA, and of course, Paul, Paul uh, Eric Ofori, Head of Research, Chamber of uh, Petroleum Consumers, COPEC, Ghana. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you so very much. Uh, this is still Breakfast Daily. Stay with us. We'll be right back.